Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And if you've been here before, you'll know that I've got a sweet spot for the Breath of the Wild. Fun fact though, in several hundred hours of playtime, I've never so much as seen Calamity Ganon. And it wasn't until my partner beat him that I thought, huh, I'm gonna make that. Now, I don't always start with an armature, but when I do, I like to make sure it goes inside the model since that's where it's most useful. For Calamity Ganon's armature, I'm gonna go real simple and start with a lump of aluminium, then cover it in black clay. Then I'll add lumps of clay and build up the bulk until my desiccated black pickle starts to look a little bit more like a healthy plump aubergine. And once my girthiness has reached appropriate levels, I can start adding the malice. Now, the malice isn't a solid color, rather it's a swirling vortex of red rage on a black background, which isn't particularly easy to replicate in clay, but I'll give it a shot. I've made some pink clay, which I'll roll together with my red clay, which should hopefully give me a nice stand-in for the Molten Malice Magma. i am then rolled this out into progressively smaller wormy dealies before adding it all willy-nilly onto the aubergine. Then once I've got an uncomfortably veiny looking eggplant, I can start gently blending the red into the black. I want to keep the colors mostly separate, but blend the edges just enough so that it's all one solid piece. Now any of the areas that are a bit too vibrant, I'll add a little bit of black over top just to help break it up. Finally, to give it a bit more of a rougher, more chaotic texture, I'll roll over the entire surface with the back of my tool. Then once I'm happy with how it looks, I'll put the entire thing into the oven to lock it all in place before moving on to adding all my creepy creepy legs. Now while I'm putting the first set of creepy legs in place, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's video, NordVPN. Now if you're not sure who NordVPN is, then let me be the first to welcome you to the internet. Hello. Now I've been using NordVPN for years now, so when they reached out to me and asked if I'd accept a bag full of money in exchange for telling you a little about them, it seemed like a no-brainer to me. Now NordVPN is a market leader when it comes to internet privacy and peace of mind. With over 5,200 dedicated servers in 60 countries, you can browse safely and securely from your computer, your Android, or your Apple device. They even offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so you can try it out yourself. Of course, while I wish that I could say that keeping my weird browsing history private and keeping dodgy folk from accessing my details is what's really important to me, what I really use a VPN for is connecting to servers in Canada so that I can convince Netflix that I'm actually sitting in my fancy Toronto apartment eating poutine and drinking a lukewarm Molson export while consuming nothing but the finest Canadian television. So go to nordvpn.com slash north of the border to get yourself a crack and deal on a two-year plan plus four additional months for free. Now with my bills paid and wires attached, I can start bulking out the legs by adding a thin layer of clay over top. I'm only going to worry about the back legs for now since they'll be the weight bearing legs and I want to get them in place before I add the four on the front. Then I'll bake the whole thing again just to lock the back legs in place and I can start adding the front uh, arms, I guess we'll call them. My understanding is that Calamity Ganon is like a half formed robot spider fetus that didn't quite finish baking before it was taken out of the oven. Which is why it's this horrible amalgam of random body parts, limbs, and laser swords. Oh yeah, he's also got a set of robo legs because apparently there was some guardian DNA mixed in there somewhere. Now up until this point I've got a mostly unidentifiable eldritch nightmare you'll only see in your worst nightmares. Or maybe in Australia. Thankfully the major body parts are done and I can get started on the detail. Naturally I'm gonna start with the butt since it wouldn't be a north of the border video if I didn't have some gratuitous butt shots. Sticking with the Australian theme, I've covered the back in black, and then I'll try and make it look kind of like a guardian by adding brown worms and balls along the surface. Now it's pretty hard to make this perfectly accurate to the model in game since you don't really see the back of Ganon and the only concept art isn't accurate to the game model either. So it's mostly what I think looks pretty. And really, that's a pretty big factor for me when it comes to making stuff. I like to be mostly accurate, but I'm more than willing to sacrifice accuracy for style. Or, you know, ease of creation. Besides, when I step outside the confines of accuracy, I'm inevitably flooded with those sweet, sweet rage-filled comments telling me how I've made a mistake and how everything I touch turns to sh**. Now with the back of the beast done, I can start beautifying the legs in the exact same way. It's at this point that I'm starting to get really excited since it's actually starting to look like something somewhat recognizable. With each addition of brown wormy dealies and cursed guardian donuts, I'm getting closer and closer to a pretty dope looking little boss fight. Once I've blended all the sections together, I'll go back across the entire surface with my tools to add little bumps and dips to give all the brown sections a bit more texture. 
Then I'll throw it all in the oven again to lock the back in place, and I can repeat the entire process again, but with the front half of the body now. Finally, with the final fine details done, I can get back to his back. More specifically, spikes. After all, all the best monsters have back spikes, and you can quote me on that. If you ain't got spikes, you can take a hike. Then the final piece of the back puzzle is the surprisingly glorious mane of flowing red hair. Now one of the benefits of sculpting a not quite fully formed robo spider fetus is that if the face looks kinda wonky, then you're doing it right. Basically to make Ganon's head, you just need to make an approximation of a skull out of black clay, plop some eyeballs in place, add some red malice veins, and then stick some poorly brushed brown teeth into place at weird angles, and you're mostly there. Then all you need to do is give him a headdress that would make a Mayan priest happy and then adorn it with teeny tiny versions of our brown worms and cursed donuts. And once it's been cured in the oven, it can be safely pressed into our beautiful flowing red mane. Then it's time to get started on the hands, feet, and stabbing devices. I'll start by beautifying the right arm stump with an appropriate number of worms and donuts before getting to work on the smaller hands and feet. I wanted to wait until now to do them since they'll be small and fragile, but also because Ganon has been in and out of the oven so many times now that if I had built the feet and claws up earlier, then they would definitely have come loose or been deformed under the weight of the body. This way, I only need to bake it one last time to lock everything in place before I get started on the painting. I'm gonna paint all of the malice covered sections with a high gloss varnish, which should give it a bit of shine and help add to the illusion of movement. I'll then paint the centers of all my donuts with a nice vibrant orange and then I'll come back through before it's dried and wet blend some white from the center outwards to give it a bit of a glowy effect. Then I'll paint some of the gaps between the brown sections with a lighter orange as well as highlighting each of the individual plates on the legs. Then the hair gets a black wash followed by a dry brushing with a lighter red to give him some of those frosted tips 12 year old Adam would have been jealous of. Then it's time to make some laser swords and claws and spears and just, just a bunch of laser weapons. I really wanted our laser armor to be as lasery as I could get without trying to run lights to each of his hands and without having to dip my feet into the terrifying world of object source lighting. So I'm turning to UV resin and pigments. My plan was to mix up a batch of blue resin and then sandwich it between two plates of perspex so that I had a uniformly thick piece to cut all the smaller weapons out of, and then mix up a thicker batch of orange to make the big laser axe. If you find when you're working with resin, the top layer is tacky no matter how long you cure it, try adding a layer of water over top to finish the cure. A lot of UV resin has trouble curing in the presence of air, so by covering it in water, you can often get a really good finish. Now with the plates peeled off, I decided that the blue was a bit too transparent and a bit too dark. To fix it, I'd need to do a whole lot of painting which defeats the entire purpose of the resin, so I'm just gonna mix up another batch, but pour in copious amounts of glow-in-the-dark pigment. Now I've only got blue pigment, so sadly the axe isn't going to glow, but with a little bit of UV light, the other weapons are going to end up looking hella lasery. Then once they've been cut down to size, I'll use a variety of carving chisels to chop off little sections and slots until they don't just look good, they look good enough. Now I thought about calling it a day here and being happy with a tiny tabletop model, but I thought he deserved a base, and in keeping with the theme, I decided to make an appropriately sized cutout of the boss arena where you end up fighting him. I happen to have some perfectly sized MDF sheets lying about, so after some quick and careful work, I've got a perfectly sized base. Fun fact, I'm reusing my NASA-built cube cutting machine in the hopes that I never have to make another Minecraft world. 
I'm trying something new here by making the top of the base out of clay. This ended up being a great idea because I like clay and it's an easy medium to work with when you want to try to make intricate designs, which you'll see in a bit. But it also ended up being a terrible idea because you need to bake it to cure it. And I made the bottom of the base out of MDF, which when you bake it, you need a cure for. Otherwise, the base follows the same general style as the rest of Ganon. Black bottom, brown worms, and cursed donuts, this time with a strawberry filling. Hey, you remember roughly 21 seconds ago when I said you need to bake clay to cure it and baking MDF is bad? Well, that means that I need to separate the clay from the MDF, so I'm gonna have to cure it as much as possible with a heat gun so that I can separate it and pop it into the oven. Not really a problem, except that this ended up making it fragile enough to crack and splinter. All part of my plan, of course, since this gave it a nice, worn, hidden temple vibe. Again, I could have called it a day here, but to really sell the scale of Kalam Ogano, I decided to make a teeny tiny link. This time, Link's gonna stand in at about 15 millimeters in height, which should be small enough to hide a lot of the wonkiness, but big enough that I get to add lots of little details in. I'll start by making a tiny armature and covering it with a thin layer of undercoat beige. Then I'll start building up the body by adding the blue overcoat, followed by some tiny brown gloves, his right arm pauldron, and the slightly sorta greenish wrist wraps. Then I'll add the v-neck in his coat and give him some worn brown leather boots before adding the cornucopia of leather belts. And with the body finished, I'll add his head, poke a few tiny details into place, and give him some pointy elf ears. Then I can add a tiny master sword sheath, a tiny Hylian shield, and finally, his iconic flowing locks. And of course, since I've got all that glowing blue resin, it only made sense to make a tiny glowing master sword. Then all that's left to do is paint in all the tiny details, glue our hero into place, and we're on to the glamour shots. I'd like to take a minute to thank the people that make these videos possible, and a shout out to my newest patrons. So a big thank you to Lex Bowen, Matthew Kahn, Silas, Lee Stevenson, Heising Hell, and Golden Hallow. If you'd like to help out, then consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your friends. If you want to go that one step further, then head on over to Patreon and have a look at the menu. Of course, I always love to read your comments, and I've decided to start answering a question or two from the week before. So leave me a comment and I might just immortalize your words in next week's video. This week's first question comes from Easy Kill Reed. I watch all your videos whilst on the toilet. It's not a question. Our second question comes from Daisy Darling. If you could eat any of your craft supplies slash materials without it tasting bad or you getting sick, what would be your top three to just absolutely gnaw into? Uh, that's easy. One, dark brown pastel. Two, five millimeter blue extruded polystyrene foam. And three, Vallejo skeleton white primer. Now, if you've got a burning question that you need desperately answered, leave me it down below and I might randomly select yours next week. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.